Okay, so section 6.4 is on completing the square. So Brian Pulaski saw what this section was the other day, and he was like, hey, in 6.4, are we learning this? And he drew that, and he was like, look, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And then he went like that. <laughs> it's not that easy. <laughs> so there is a lot of math involved. So um, the method uh, has to do with these first types of problems. So it says some equations can be solved without factoring. So if you can get an equation into the form x squared equals a number or x plus something squared equals a number, then you can solve it by just taking the square root of both sides and writing plus or minus um, and then solving. So number one, we have 3x squared minus 5 equals 67. Okay, so see how that doesn't have an x squared and an x in it, so we don't need to factor it all. So all you're going to do is you're going to add the 5 to both sides. So you're going to get 3x squared equals 72. Divide by 3. So I get x squared equals 20, what is that, 24? I should know that. So x squared equals 24, and then I take the square root of both sides. So when I take the square root of both sides, make sure you write plus or minus, right? So you get x equals plus or minus the square root of 24. But if you remember from our previous sections, we can't leave square root of 24 like that. It actually reduces down. So what's a perfect square factor that goes into it? Chris, do you know? Four. Four, right. So you get plus or minus the square root of four times the square root of six. So plus or minus two root six. Okay, and that's your answer. Easy enough, right? Not too bad. Didn't involve factoring, which some of you guys don't like still. I told you it's not going away. All right, so number two. So I have c squared minus 6c plus 9 equals 10. Okay, and what I notice about c squared minus 6c plus 9, that's what we call a perfect square trinomial. Okay, and a lot of you guys may not notice that, and that's fine, because you could always solve this one with factoring. But if you notice that that's a perfect square trinomial, it might save you some work. So basically that one factors into c minus 3 times c minus 3. So c minus 3 times c minus 3 equals 10, which means that it's c minus 3 squared equals 10. So Kern, if I'm solving this one, what, what should I do? Just like the last one, only now you just have the c minus 3 under the square part. Okay, so I'm going to square root both sides. And whenever you take the square root, remember you write plus or minus. So I get c minus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 10. Square root of two, 10 doesn't reduce down because 2 and 5 aren't perfect, or they aren't perfect squares, so you can't take the square root evenly. So it's just c equals, we add the 3 over. And I usually put it in front. So I'm going to have 3 plus or minus the square root of 10. Okay. And that's typically the way we write it, just because remember how I talked about sometimes your square roots get a little crazy. So your 3 ends up like somewhere around there. And it looks like it might be under the root. And then you guys write plus or minus the square root of 13. It's not plus or minus the square root of 13. That's your answer. So it's 3 plus or minus root 10. OK, so you guys try 3 and 4. So 3 is just like number 1. 4 is just like number 2. Okay, so number three, you guys should have uh, subtracted 11 from both sides. So you get 4z squared equals 48. Divide by 4. So you get z squared equals 12. So z equals plus or minus root 12. And then you guys knew that 4 went into 12, and you can take the square root of 4. So you get square root of 4 times square root of 3, so it's plus or minus 2 root 3 is equal to z. Okay, so those are your two answers. All right, and then number 4, hopefully you guys saw that the first one factors into uh, y plus 6 times y plus 6. So in other words, it's y plus 6 squared equals 49. Then you took the square root of both sides. 
And when you take the square root of a number, we write plus or minus. So I get y plus 6 equals plus or minus 7. So then you subtract your 6 from both sides. And we write it in front, so I get y equals negative 6 plus or minus 7. And a lot of you guys are wanting to leave it like that. Okay, but that, this is very different than like number 2. Number 2 was 3 plus root 10. And 3 minus root 10, those are two numbers. But that's the way you leave those numbers. That's as simplified as possible. But in this case, we have negative 6 plus 7, and we have negative 6 minus 7, and I know what those are. So the first one is going to be, so y is negative 6 plus 7, so y is 1. And the second one's going to be, y is negative 6 minus 7, so y is negative 13. So those are your two answers. Okay, so just like any factoring problem, you can always go back and you can check these in the original. You would get a true statement. So if you checked 1, you get 1 plus 12 plus 36, that equals 49. So 49 equals 49. Okay, and then you can do the same thing with negative 13. All right. So it says we can use the above method if we get our equation in one of those special forms. But things aren't always, like, already in that special form for us. So we can see that it's a perfect square trinomial right away and then take the square root. So we have to actually get it in that form. So this is called completing the square. So we want to get it so that it's something squared. OK, so steps to completing the square. So get your equation in the form x squared plus bx equals c. In order to do this, you might have to divide by, so might have to divide by a. So do you know what I mean by a? So a is always the number in front of your x squared, right? So the number in front of x squared. Okay, so then I always say have it and square it. So in other words, you're going to look at the coefficient on the x term, you're going to divide by 2 and square the number. So the number in front of the x term. Okay, then you add your result. So the number in front of x was b, so you have b over 2 squared, that's a b. So b over 2 squared, so both sides of the equation. You write the left side of your equation as a perfect square, and then you solve just like we did before. Don't forget your plus and minus signs. Okay, kind of confusing, so let's see some examples. So the very first one, I have x squared equals 12x minus 20. So I want to get it so that all the x's are on one side and all the things without x are on the other side. So I'm going to write that. So get all terms with x on one side. Okay, so I'm going to have x squared minus 12x equals negative 20. Okay, we have a 1 in front of x squared. That's what we want. So 1 in front of x squared, so that's good. Okay, so that means we're ready to have it and square it. So we're going to look at the number in front of your x. So it's called b. So I'm going to do b over 2 squared. So I get negative 12 over 2, and I square it. So that's negative 6 squared, which is 36. Okay, so that's kind of like a off to the side thing. So we've done that. Now we're going to go back to that x squared minus 12x equals negative 20. So now I'm going to add, so I have x squared minus 12x, and I'm going to add that to both sides. So I'm going to have plus 36 equals negative 20 plus 36. So I've added it to both sides. Okay, you guys with me so far? This is the point where people get confused because then they always combine that thing on the right. So they say negative 20 plus 36 is 16. And then they try to subtract it to the other side, which takes you back to what you just had at the beginning. So don't subtract it over. Leave that on the right side. So now I have x squared minus 12x plus 36, and this is a special thing. We did this for a reason because now it should be something squared. So do you guys see that it's something times itself? Yeah, it's x minus 6 times x minus 6. 
So I write it as x minus 6 squared. Okay, now it's just like the problems we did before. So we're going to take the square root of both sides, write plus or minus. So I have x minus 6 equals plus or minus 4. That one came out nice and even, so that means you're going to have two numbers, like two integers in the end. So I'm going to add 6 over. So I get x equals 6 plus or minus 4. So, Gabby, what are my answers? Yep, so you're doing 6 plus 4, 6 minus 4. So 10 and 2. Okay, so let's do the next one. So the next one's a little bit harder because we don't have a 1 in front of the x squared, so we're going to have to take care of that. Okay, so it's already set up, so the x's are on one side, so first step's done. Okay, we want 1x squared. So we're going to divide by 3. So I had 3x squared minus 24x equals 27. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 3. So when I do that, I get x squared minus 8x equals 9. Sometimes there will be fractions. That will be OK. So now we're ready to have it in square. We have the x's on one side. There's a 1 in front of x squared. So I do my b over 2 squared. So I have negative 8. I'm going to divide by 2 and square it. So I get negative 4 squared, which is 16. Okay, That's what I add to both sides of the equation. So I have x squared minus 8x plus 16. And I have 9 plus 16. Okay, you with me so far? Okay, we've done this for a reason because now that left side of the equation should be what we call a perfect square, so something squared. So if you don't know, you can kind of factor it. You can say, okay, well, this would be x minus 4 times x minus 4. So that's why it's x minus 4 squared equals 25. If you guys get really good at completing the square, you'll notice a pattern in these. So notice how your last number, x minus 4, that negative 4, that has appeared somewhere in your problem. It was what you had when you did b over 2 before you squared it. So that's always b over 2. So if you go back here, if you look at b over 2, it was negative 6. That's what went there. Does that make sense? <laughs> Izzy's very excited. <laughs> All right, so it kind of saves you from having to know factoring, but you should really know factoring anyway. All right, so square root both sides. So I get x minus 4 equals plus or minus 5. So that means x is going to be, oops, it's getting very tiny now, isn't it? <laughs> x equals, you add the 4 over, so I get 4 plus or minus 5. So x is 9, and x is 4 minus 5, so negative 1. Okay, those are your two answers. All right, you guys want to try number 3? All right, so try number 3, and I'll go ahead and check. All right, so you have 18x plus 3x squared equals 45. Okay. So you're going, the x's are already on one side. We usually see the x squared first, so let's rewrite it. I'm going to do two steps in one. I'm going to divide by 3 as well. So when I divide by 3, you should get x squared plus 6x equals 15. Okay. In that form, we have 1 out front x is on one side, so we're going to have it and square it. So do the middle term, so 6. You're going to divide by 2 and square. So 6 over 2 squared. So it's 3 squared, which is 9. So you add 9 to both sides. So x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 15 plus 9. So when you do that, you should have something squared. Do you guys see what it is? 
x plus 3, right? So x plus 3 times itself equals 24. So now it's set up so that you can take the square root and solve. So when I take the square root and write plus or minus, I'm going to get x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 24. Okay, you can do square roots a couple different ways. So some of you guys um, still are having trouble. Oops, let me insert a new page. Okay, so if you have square root of 24, remember we did the factor trees? So you can break it into like 8 and 3. So then you could do 4 and 2, 2, 2, 2, and 3. So that's the perfect, or that's the... Um, what do you call that? I can't even think what prime factorization, not perfect factorization. Prime factorization of 24. Okay, but when you're taking the square root, you're looking for pairs. So we fa have a pair of twos here. So if I took the square root of 2 times 2, so square root of 4, you get 2. So that's what I'm doing when I'm writing this as square root of 4 times square root of 6. Those are the ones that are left and didn't have any pairs. So square root of 4 is 2, square root of 6 stays as it is. So it's 2 square root of 6. So I have plus or minus 2 square root of 6 equals x plus 3. Subtract the 3 over, we write it in front. So I'm going to have x equals negative 3 plus or minus 2 root 6. Okay, and then one last thing. A lot of people ask me if they should write like negative 5 root 6 and negative 1 root 6. Did anybody try that? Did you guys do that? Okay, that's actually how the answer stays, because think about if you had negative 3 plus or minus 2x. That means you'd have negative 3 plus 2x, and you'd have negative 3 minus 2x. And can you combine those things? No. So that square root of 6 makes, it, makes them not like terms, so you can't combine them. So you actually leave your answer as negative 3 plus 2 root 6 and negative 3 minus 2 root 6. There are actually two answers there, um, but we just write it as plus or minus. So that's just one. It looks like one answer. All right, makes sense? Okay, I'm going to give you about five minutes to work on your homework, and then we'll play a little game.